Welcome to the First Player Token Podcast, a short podcast for folks who enjoy playing board games with family and friends. I'm your host, Derek Brough. In this episode, we're going back to the space race with the upcoming new expansion, Space Explorers Age of Ambition. Back in episode 19, I reviewed a game called Space Explorers, published by 25th Century Games. In Space Explorers, players take on the roles of heads of space research centers, recruiting a variety of experts to build and launch satellites and spaceships, hoping to have the most impressive set of projects and specialists by the end of the game. You get to recruit scientists and engineers and test pilots and astronauts, while you work towards missions taken from the U.S. and USSR space programs, including Sputnik, Voyager, Voskhod, and Apollo. In that episode, I interviewed Chad Elkins, the one-man show behind 25th Century Games, and he gave me my first podcast exclusive. 25th Century had an expansion in the works for space explorers, and it would feature other countries who were among the first countries to space. Space Explorer's Age of Ambition is that expansion, and it's now available on GameFound for pre-order. Chad kindly sent me an advanced copy so I could preview the expansion here on the pod. Before I launch in, if you're not familiar with Space Explorers, you might hit pause, go listen to episode 19, and come back. I'll wait here. Age of Ambition continues the base game's stylish 1960s Life magazine vibe, with illustrations of space program leaders, and new missions from Japan and France, and crises that set back your exploration. There's an Apollo 13 or For All Mankind look and feel to the game. Age of Ambition features seven different modules, any of which can be added to the base game to give the game a new feel. Some of the modules just tweak the game a little bit, while others change the game mechanics significantly. I'll say more about those modules in a minute, but first I want to bring in my amazing wife, Emily, to offer a little color commentary on Space Explorers and its new expansion. You might hear a special guest appearance in this interview, too, from our new baby. Thanks for coming back on the podcast, Emily. Thanks for having me. Sharing some thoughts on Space Explorers and its new expansion, Age of Ambition. I, uh, I was really struck by the visual design of this game. That's definitely what caught my eye. What do you think of the visual design of this game? I love the visuals, um, especially of the base game. The color palette is very limited and it utilizes um, mostly colors that you would think of from the 60s. It was a very popular color palette to have earth tones in the 60s and 70s. And um, in you know the 50s, so around in, in when the space exploration was at its height, and so you really get drawn in to that with the, the colors right off the bat. Um, there's a nice yellow ochre and a crimson red, and they're all muted. So if you can imagine the brilliant hue, but then. Um, turning it down a couple of notches, um, making it more muted, but still a very pure tone and um, the green and the the purple, I would say, both have more of a yellow undertone than, um, than blue or red, so that's sort of the overlay of the whole game I think is like mm. an off-white yellow yeah and that also kind of makes you feel like it's old or <laughs> you know right it almost looks like a, a game you might have found in your grandparents closet yeah with the with the off-white everywhere yeah and the iconography and the symbols are all really consistent and they go well together I think something that I noticed that was helpful was that the there's circles that go with circles and squares that go with squares. Yes. <laughs> and that's very helpful because some games, yeah. that's not the case. Because actually each of these five colors in the base game are doing double duty. There's a blue that represents a resource, but then there's a blue that represents a skill. 
Yes. And those function differently in the game. It's the same color, but one is always a square and one is always a circle. And that's very helpful. Um, Another thing that's interesting is that they pull the colors into the illustrations. So mm. when it's a blue skill, and you're more familiar with the gameplay than I am, sure. so you tell me if I'm saying it wrong. But yeah, those are those are the engineers. Yes. So the engineer is standing in front of a bank of equipment that is also that same blue color. Oh yeah. And um, it's not just also blue. It's it's the same. It's the same blue. Yes. Yeah. And then the um, scientist is surrounded by some soft light, which sort of makes her look yellow, like the yellow on her... Her symbol. Her symbol. Yeah. And then, you know, the same with the red and the green and the purple. And the purple I love because it, it's the purple of the sky. So... Oh, Yeah. There's not a lot of harsh colors in this, so there's not a pure black or um, a pure white in any of the illustrations. There is white and there there might be black, but it's very mm. muted if there is any. And I don't actually know that I see any black until, really until you get to the expansion cards. And mm. then some of the cards are more distinct there's definitely some black on the country logos. Right. And so there's these new country cards and they look different altogether. They, it's sort of a, it feels like a departure for me from the original game um, only because it looked, you know, they're using a purple, a green, a blue, and a red, but they're not on that yellow spectrum and they're mm. um they're a little more brilliant as far as the hue is more pure than the other original mm. in the base game and so i it feels intentional but i just don't know why they did it exactly that way um they look the country colors from the expansion look a little more 80s to me. Yeah. There's like a mint green. And a, what is that, like a salmon red? Yeah. They actually, and they look like candy. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like the Easter M&Ms. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe even the eggs in Wingspan. <laughs> yeah. They're very similar to the eggs in Wingspan. Yeah. But they don't quite match the colors from the original game. Right, so I feel like if they had just maybe moved those colors into the yellow arena a little bit, then it wouldn't have felt so much as a departure, but but that may have felt too close to the other cards that, you know, they're trying to do a lot of things, and I don't know how visually confusing that would have been. So. Right, because the U.S., player board is blue but it's that blue doesn't mean the same as the engineering blue from the original game right and so you don't need to associate us with engineers so they needed a different color for that but what you're saying is they've maybe the colors aren't different enough they're not different enough to make you realize that they did it on purpose yeah. i feel like so but at the same time the whole game is so intentional with its colors and color choices and illustrations and yeah. um, it's really remarkable and a joy to look at. So, you know, I, I'm very curious. I would just love to talk to the designers to find out what led them to choose these colors. And the most brilliant colors you see in the expansion are just the colors of the flags of the new countries that are built into these designs. And I really like that each of those little country symbols has their flag colors, but also works a rocket into the design of the symbol. So like there's a, a, ro a rocket inside the Eiffel Tower for France, and yeah, there's cool. a rocket coming out of the sickle in the hammer and sickle for the Soviet Union. Yeah. I thought that was a nice design touch. When I looked at this game, I said, oh, that's very pleasing. And I feel like you said it's pleasing and you know why it's pleasing. 
Well, thank you, Emily, for coming back on the pod. Anything else you want to say? I enjoy looking at this game. So (laughs) thanks for having me on to talk about it. Absolutely. Emily always helps me appreciate the art and design in my board games. And she does the same thing when we go to art museums, too. I always come away with a, a deeper appreciation for what artists are doing with color and shape and form. Now, let's talk about those seven modules that Age of Ambition adds to Space Explorers. They're numbered from one to seven, with the lower numbered modules adding a lot more to the game. For instance, module one, Space Powers, that's the big one. Every player takes on one of four different nations to launch space missions, the US, the USSR, Japan, and France. Each nation features a player board with multiple unique player powers. There's a lot happening in this module, which adds to the game's learning curve, but also to the strategic options that players have. Module 2, Prominent Leaders, adds 18 leader cards to the game. Think of these as powerful specialists to recruit to your research hubs. They act like wild cards, adding skill points to whatever division of your hub you put them in, but they cost more than regular specialists and have in-game scoring abilities. Module 3, Impeding Crises, was our favorite new module when we played the expansion. You'll add new crisis cards to your game, and while each crisis is active, something doesn't work right. It's a crisis, right? One crisis card limits you to using just one specialist ability per turn. Another one keeps you from adding specialists of a certain type, like test pilots, to your research hubs. The crises require some creative problem solving and more competition for resources since they affect all players and since you can see which crisis is coming next. Module 3 will slow down the game somewhat, but it adds a lot of fun problem solving. The other modules tweak the game in smaller ways. Module 4, Strategic Goals, gives each player a random set of goals to achieve aside from the big projects. Module 5, Executive Talents, gives each player a different special power adding to the tactics and shortening the game length a little. Module 6, Remarkable Projects, adds 8 new projects which are either worth more points than the regular projects or variable points depending on what's in your research hub. And Module 7, Higher Directives, gives each player a briefcase token that can be used to copy other research tokens you're spending. You're encouraged to play with not just one module, but three of them, and the modules interact with each other in very interesting ways. We played with modules 1, 4, and 7 in our first game, that would be Space Powers, Strategic Goals, and Higher Directives, which gave us lots of things to aim for and some extra powers to try to get there. Our second game featured modules 3, 5, and 6, Impeding Crises, Executive Talents, and Remarkable Projects, which meant we were using our unique player powers to navigate a series of common crises. This combination felt simpler than the other combo, but very satisfying with the crises in play. Combining modules and the variability within modules means that Age of Ambition adds a lot of replayability to an already fun game. The original Space Explorers does a great job connecting its mechanisms to its theme, and the Age of Ambition expansion continues that tradition. Reading through the appendix explaining all the details of the expansions, it's clear that the designer, Yuri Zaravlov, took a lot of inspiration from real space programs. Again, Module 3, Impeding Crises, shines here, with crises like Top Secret, which limits the abilities of some of your specialists since they're working on projects where they don't know the details, or Personnel Shortage, which limits the number of cards, that is, specialists, you can have in your hand since there's a tight job market. Age of Ambition is indeed an ambitious expansion. I haven't even mentioned the new solo mode for the base game that works with all seven modules. I've tried it, and it captures the tense feel of a space race between you and another smart player. Age of Ambition is currently available for pre-order on GameFound, as this podcast episode drops, and I'm sure it will be for sale on the 25th Century Games website later this year. That's it for this episode of First Player Token. See the show notes for links to past episodes and for photos of Age of Ambition. If this is your first episode of the podcast, have a listen to some of our past episodes. Each one is short and sweet, and most feature one of the kids in my life with their thoughts on a game that we like. I've been your host, Derek Bruff. Thanks for listening. Now it's time to play some games.
And I think that's true for the test pilot too, right? Yep, the it's test definitely... pilot has that green of the 60s green equipment. If you can imagine an army base with all of the furniture mm. and that olive green mm. Kind of like that chair in our book nook that you like. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you use some words I don't always use, like ultramarine and thalo. How do you spell thalo? Do you know? Oh, it starts it, with a P. It starts with a P. Okay. I love that there's a canon of pigment, pigment names. <laughs> <laughs> That's like some secret in the world I didn't know about until today. <laughs> so thank you for sharing. You're welcome.